Greetings everyone, this is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and Progressive Discussions. And before I go on to do my next video talk show, I am stopping by from my immediate area off Route 17 South in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey, the one and only, the famous Bendix Diner, as seen on the Jerry Seinfeld Netflix series, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. That's right. It is in my close area, and, and it, I love it here. Outstanding food, outstanding coffee, and I will go in soon before I go on to do my next show. Okay. James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and Progressive Discussions here. And uh, aside from the famous Bendix Diner in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey, Route 17 South, right behind the famous Teterboro Airport where everyone with private jets lands who wish to visit New York City. I, we are right next door, directly next door to the famous Bananas Comedy Club in the Holiday Inn on Route 17 South in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey. And there it is. The famous Bananas Comedy Club with a very highly rated Gabriel's Restaurant. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna, Mega Life 21, Progressive Discussions. Greetings, greetings, everyone, especially Commodore Jeff Zambello. I just have arrived to have coffee with my old time friend, commercial voiceover specialist, William H. Morrow III. And it is Monday. There's my car because I couldn't park right next to my friend. William H. Moore of the Third's car because of this individual that really, really took up two parking spaces. Look at that. Look at that Jeff Sambello. Incredible. The assholes that are on the road today in this part of the country. Unbelievable. You, can you believe the ill-mannered nerve of this? The gall of, of people today in the 21st century? You know? Unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. It's not a Corvette or a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a BMW or a Bentley or a Rolls Royce or whatever, a Mercedes. It's a humble car. Nothing, you know, nothing, nothing extravagant, but look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable. Warming up with a fucking soccer ball. I, I remember looking down, you know, I said, saying, all right, Mark, bye bye. I hope my fucking prayers have been answered. I said, Lou, you can warm me up. Oh, great song, great song. Yeah. I got five warm ups. And he quit. Warm ups? That's it, that's it. It hurts too much. They're warm ups, Lou. I said, come on. I love this song. Hey, they've been playing great, good music here. 107.5 WBLS. Today's RB. And that's it. So, there you go. But oh, I took him to school so fast. What have you ever heard of quarterbacks in football yelling into their to, to me, the opposing quarterback yelling, Do you ever fucking miss? Okay, so we, well, I'm sleeping in my dreams, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. That's how frustrated they got. Ooh. When they yelled out, you could hear them screaming, saying, I need help over here. I can't cover all this. They said, You want to tell me how to cover that? I said, You can. You can. We have routes you cannot cover. And you don't see the NFL using them anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Now, I, I had to pinch myself hard today watching CNN. Donald Trump never had liquor or beer? He, he actually said that. No, he's been saying that ever since two, three years ago. A shifty guy like him? I even know nice people that drink beer, uh, craft beer and 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 liquor, and, but they don't abuse it. Well, but Donald line, Trump not drinking ever. The bottom line is: is that anything to be proud of? Is something to be ashamed of? So the, what? Yeah, so, so what? Drink or smoke? Okay. So what? I never smoked or drank. Maybe you should. That's your problem. A, a, a lot of great minds 
smoked marijuana when they were younger. Or, or big deal, you drank beer and you, you drank whiskey. Bur who cares? He also said, uh, what did he say about his sitting? <laughs> I, I was laughing. What did he say about his sitting? He, he said, he says, I've never asked for forgiveness because I've never sinned. Oh, really? Never born with the first sin. Okay. He never well, sinned. One, you're a chronic liar. So uh, he's perfect. Okay. No, he's an idiot. He's sick. He, he blatantly looks in people's eyes and lies. A chronic liar can do that. Like a they, In fact, they probably believe what they're saying, even though it's not true. Pathological liars, yeah. Sick. I just can't picture a guy like him never having a beer or, or a cocktail in the business world. Even my, my uncle Phil had to have cocktails and martinis. Be be if you're in a if you're entertaining high level business people, sometimes you just got to go have a drink with them. Oh. You can't like what are you going to order like Barnaby Jones? You're going to order a glass of milk at a business oh. at a business uh, uh, get together? They're having a vodka martini. And you're drinking a glass of milk. Okay. Yeah, right. Donald Trump. Never you know what I'd say. I'd, say? I'd look at him and say, you don't know what you're missing, boy. But just like looking at him and knowing how his nature is, the fact that he claimed never to drink is preposterous. He's an asshole. Yeah, and, he's a, and you see how he cut off that girl? I had one more question. That's enough for you. That's enough for you. <laughs> oh. I, wa I was watching that crazy show because I was flipping the channels. Um, Impractical Jokers, they, they, pull, they pull pranks. One of the guys was sitting. Oh, one of the guys. One of the, I was like, I, I got. Did you hear him there? Maybe I got. Really? No, maybe I, I just got enthusiastic. But you always do. But just tell me, just tell me I the look. Just go, James. Because I notice when I go back, okay. I can hear you way back there. Oh, I'm, like, all right, I'm right. sorry. Maybe I don't. I don't, I don't want anybody else here. I don't realize my own. Now the guy, one one of his boys, sat in the dental office. The, the impractical Joker team who pulls pranks sat in the dentist's office. With, had a bag with him. He takes a water pick out with water in it and starts water picking his mouth with the with the water going all over the floor. And, and everybody in the room is like. Looking at him like, what the hell? The waiting room, the waiting room for a dentist. And then he takes, he says, oh I, I, oh, I forgot to work out. He takes out a couple of shake weights, which looks kind of obscene. And he starts doing this with the shake. Have you ever seen the shake weight infomercial? Way back, that was years it looks, ago. It looks like somebody's whacking off. Yeah. Yeah. He starts doing that. Then the other guy says, I want to exercise too. This guy was in on it? Yeah, the other guy. He takes his shirt off, he's bald headed, he's got a, a, a bikini, he's got a, a woman's bathing suit on, he starts doing yoga in the middle of the waiting room floor. And all these people are ready to leave. They're all like, what the hell? They're like looking at them like they're nuts. And they're laughing because, you know, they have it on camera. They're hysterical. Well, look what happened to me with the naked guy over here. They didn't, they said, nothing crazy you does. But you know what one of the funniest pranks was? Lowering a fake tarantula on women's shoulders in, in public. Oh, I've done that. Other people have done it to me. Yes. And they, they look real oh. now. I mean. The 55-gallon drum. And they had the new guy or girl. Well, it was filled with popcorn uh, styrofoam. And they said, so and so, would you get the thing out of that, that drum for me? So they go over the girls and dig through the popcorn. And there'd be a guy that come up. <laughs> oh, oh, that's like the casket thing in the funeral home. There's a live guy in the casket. Well, they had that on episode of Wings. Yeah. Scared the crap out of him. Whoa! <laughs> they had that on uh, The Fake Wedding. I forget that show years ago. Wasn't there a show called Wedding Crashers where people actually oh, crashed? No, the, the, everybody at the wedding was an actor. Except with, with the one girl actor, it was her first date with this guy. He had no clue. She said, before we go, can we stop by my, my friend's wedding? Right. He goes, sure, sure. So they're at the wedding. And the bride and groom actors are at the altar. And she goes to the, to the future groom, wait. I've got to tell something. I've been having an affair. And he goes, what? I've been having 
husband having an affair. She turns to the new guy that has the report. She goes, with? With him. With him. <laughs> he goes, what? I don't even know this. Are you crazy? Goes, You've got to tell them, honey. It's just you and I. He, had, he went nuts. He didn't know what to say. Oh, man. They call that, in, in pro wrestling, they call that ribbing, when you're ribbing somebody. Oh, ribbing. That's real original. Ribbing. Jesus. Yeah. But that was funny. That, that is funny. I mean, practical jokes can be really clever. They had it on Wings where uh, Brian and Joe, you never saw Wings, did you? A couple episodes. They lost the body. They had to fly to Florida, pick up the body of the wealthiest guy on Nantucket, and he died. They lost his body along the way. Right. Hey, Joe. You know, with a long beard and a long gray hair, you look like just old man. I don't know, I'll say Smith. Okay, what do we have to do with the wake? You gotta get in the coffin. <laughs> I can dress them up with a beard. Oh, man. And look at him, Joe's lying there in the coffin at the wake. Antonio comes in, he's a cab driver, the Italian. He walks up to his respects and says, I never did like you. I drove you on over this effing island. You never tip a tip at me once. Say, nice watch. And Joe goes, get away, Scarpacci. He goes, oh, oh, oh. he passed out. <laughs> yeah, that, that must that have been. So that that was so awesome. That was hysterical. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. That was so good. It's like the, the show Fear Factor, remember? That's great. Yeah, Fear Factor was great. But, um... Another good song. Uh, there was, there was, uh, well, they're, were they Irish? I think Sounded. so, but I don't know what they're for. It's like that Good Night Irene, or Eileen, or something. Oh, that sucks. The guy looked like he was like... Good Night Irene, he's, what's the other one? Oh, that was a that was a funny. That was like two life crew singing "Me Too Horny," "Me Rub You Wrong Time," back in the now, 80s. Now the one that was really good was I think I'm turning Japanese. Turning Japanese, I really yeah, but that really sticks in your head. But that was good. Had a good beat to it. No wine, no women, no, no style, no sex, no drugs, no wine, no, no women. women. <laughs> That's like, around me is a total that's like Donald Trump. No sex, no drugs, I no wine, no women. I a weird head as I was coming over. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. God, I didn't know you were there, too. I didn't see you. You a spy? Hi, you CIA? You CIA? <laughs> no sex, no drugs. No, that's Donald Trump. No sex, no drugs, no wine, no women. I'm innocent. I'm sinless. <laughs> Bike. Except for the plastic case, I don't like that on the back. Is that a big hog, Harley? Uh, I don't know if it's a Harley. Or not. I like the saddlebags that come with those big bikes. No, the leather ones. leather, not plastic like that. No, no. be a straight street bike. Yeah. The, the guys used to bust poor Tiny that called it an old man bike. He said, "Why don't you get a sports or a chopper? Or a, you know, get a get a, a real macho bike." No, don't drive the old man back. I, let me tell you. you did he have a bike? Did he have a bike? He had lots of bikes. I he did. He had a, he had a Harley Panhead, a shovel he head. Never drove them anyway. He, never saw he had them. a collection. No, but he rode, but not too often. <laughs> he he liked the big one though, the big hog, you know. But you can go long distance on those hogs. You know, it's 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 not the, the motorcycle riders' fault that causes the accident. It's the drivers. It's the drivers that screw well, up the bikers. You're right. This is good. This is good. I love this song. Yeah. <laughs> Can't, can't get you out of my head. Is that what they're saying?
Bridge. Can't get you out of my head. That's that's what Eileen sings about about Ray. Can't get you out of my head. My lips all Thank you. That's what she says. She might as well get one of those silicone male dolls from Japan. You know what? Yeah, you're right. She is bonkers. At least from here, you get a good bird's eye view of everything. Yeah. We saw them for our life. We've been missing a while. Oh, you know, I didn't even hear the, the show on TV when we were sitting over there. No. <laughs> Gotta be. I like this part. Great song. Thank you. Thank you. She had cancer too. Yeah. yeah, it's a great thing I have a collection of those denim shirts. They they still one of the best clothing for men. One of the best shirts for them. I don't care what people say about designer this and designer that. They're all good. Walmart's Route 66 from Kmart. Walmart doesn't have much. No, well, Route 66 had better, had good prices. I know they were like... Better off of Kmart, Target, and Kohl's. Walmart just doesn't have much. I wonder if the, the big Paramus Kmart got closed down. It's closed for years. Oh, because there's still Kmarts out there. Where? I think uh, Passaic or Westwood or, or uh, Carney or something. I don't oh, know. Christ, that. nothing around here is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know why? Ever since the Walmarts opened up, they drove drove the Kmarts out. Well, I'm not crazy about them. They don't have much to me. They have a lot of stuff, but nothing I need. And the, and managers are clueless. When I when I ask a store well, manager, to Walmart, you can't get man's underwear in your size. All my friends even say the same thing. They say you can't get over the cap tube, tube socks. I said, I know. It's weird, isn't it? A store that big, you, all they have is ankle socks. Listen, like socks. That's a fact sock. I, I got the store manager over at Walmart, right? I says, how come your shelves are so empty? How come, when do you anticipate getting this, that, and the other thing? He goes, we have an overnight crew that puts out merchandise. This is, but I told that, that too. I said, you told me that too, and I came back the next day and the next day, and it's still not here. But that doesn't answer our question, yeah, I told him. I said, when do you think this will be in? All these high-tech computers have us. You can't check to see if this is arriving tonight, what's coming up. I said, none of you can answer my questions. To myself, I said, they can't even speak goddamn English. That's like, that's like all these telling me shepherd's pie is out of season. It's never out of season. Don't give me that. How could mashed potatoes and ground beef it's be never out of, out of season? That's a lie. Me and ice cubes. Ice cube trays. Come off of it. People don't use ice cubes in the winter. Stop it. Yeah, people don't eat ice cream in the winter? This is bullshit. I eat nothing is seasonal anymore. Only, only produce because they can't grow it in certain seasons. So much illogic today in, in the business world. It, it's customer service sucks. I mean, unbelievable. I called Swanson Vitamins one time. I had I had a, a legitimate question about an herb, right? She says, um, oh, let me look in, in the computer system and give you more information. She goes, oh, I don't have, there's nothing else on the, in the computer. It's all on the label. I says, no, it's not all on the label. Stop it. I says, where was this ginseng grown? Was is it organic? Is it inorganic? Or how old are the roots? Which means a lot. Which is not really servicing a customer, hotshot. You know, the older the yeah, ginseng, the older the ginseng root, the more potent it is. Well, I was saying you're not really servicing yeah. a customer. She says, "Oh, I'm the product specialist." I say, "You're a specialist." Specialist. Where? Of what? Are all, giving me a lip service. All they read is whatever's on the computer monitor. <laughs> Now, a specialist would know, would say, Mr. Morrow, I'm going to answer your question right now. 
and tell you. It's all bullshit. Yeah, they give these, they give people these titles nowadays. Fucking people are doing. Yeah. And these companies, they make money and they don't know what they're doing. Don't they realize that penny wise and pound foolish is not good for business? It's stupid. And you know, I told this Indian guy that run, uh, owns a GNC franchise, I said, you know, keeping bare shelves is not good for business either because it decreases sales. Yeah, GNC's for sale. Oh, fun. as a company? Okay. So it's called Vitamin Shop and Vitamin World. They're all hurting. I, because they shot themselves in the foot. They're all hurting. Oh my God. Once you get caught. And who else? I hope Papa John's goes under. No, not, not Pizza Hut. Papa John's. Because that guy made a statement. I'm not. Oh, Jimmy, he made no big deal. I'm well, not. A statement years no, ago. not that. No, he says we're not obligated to share the company's prosperity with our employees. Well, which, you're not obligated. Which you're means, not. which means, trickle-down economics is debunked. Hey, you, you, nobody said you've got to have profit sharing. Then there is no trickle-down economics. No, you get paid or whatever. Some companies do, some don't. He's not obligated. He's right. He's not well, obligated. Well, then trickle-down's a lie. Okay, James P. Madonna departing the well-renowned Gabriel's. Grill and Bar in the famous Bananas Comedy Club. Holiday Inn, Hasbro Kites, New Jersey. Okay, there we go. Route 17 South. Okay. I'm going to depart now. There's the fountain, the lovely fountain that's here. All right. As I depart. It's been a pretty good um, progressive discussions. Not bad. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.